Uh, Darren Peck joining us now. Darren, you've been tracking this thing for well over a week. What are we talking about right now? First of all, the categorizing that we're putting on this, right? Everybody, we've been so focused on that. Is it a five? Is it a three? Right. What is it? The only thing that tells you are the wind speeds within the immediate center of that storm. So a category three is better than a category five in that sense, because now you've only got sustained winds that are 130 miles an hour. But it doesn't talk about the water and nope. everything else that this hurricane is. Exactly. Can and there, as we've seen, well, the winds are a huge concern with any hurricane, but what we've witnessed from these storms over the last several years are the other aspects that are oftentimes as or more impactful. Storm surge. With Helene, it was the intense flooding. So we're gonna do a lot in terms of tracking this storm, in terms of timing and direction, but the first thing I wanna do is just try to put a little bit of perspective on what's driving these storms to become as extreme as we've been seeing them getting over the last several years. And that's some of the context that I think will be very helpful to start out this discussion. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna visualize what this storm looks like on the big picture. This is the high resolution satellite imagery looking down on Milton and you can see that circulation in the clouds. You see it out there towards the left side of your screen. You can't even tell where Florida is because that's how large the shield of clouds from this storm has gotten. And you can already see this thing is about to make landfall that much. We know that's been in the news quite a lot over the last uh, 12 hours. If that's where Milton stands now, let's just go into a little bit of context on this. We're gonna say goodbye to the big picture view. And instead I wanna show you what the perhaps overriding driver for making these storms so supercharged is over the last decade, and it's out here. These are sea surface temperatures in the Gulf. It's one thing to look at a color-coded image like this. You can see that it's orange, and that tells you water temperatures are in the mid-80s. That's warm. Our water temperatures off our coast right now are like 60. So mid-80s is much warmer, but that's only half of the story. It's supposed to be warmer over here. It always was, but what we're seeing now becomes visual when we look at this a different way. And instead of looking at what the actual sea surface temperatures are reading you, we need to pull out the story of how far above average are those temperatures. Look off the coast of Florida. I'm gonna zoom that in actually. And when you look right off the coast of Florida in the exact spot where Milton is gonna make landfall, there is a pool of much warmer than average sea surface temperatures sitting out there. We know now almost certainly, if you've been paying attention to the hurricane stories over the last few years, these things feed on warm sea surface temperatures. Not only is it warmer than average in the Gulf right now, it is the warmest it's ever been since we've been keeping records here. It's, and in some cases, it's well off the charts. Why are these storms going through this rapid intensification? Why are they able to deliver such intense effects like what we've been seeing? Right here in our own backyard, turns out one of the institutions here helping us understand this and helping the world understand this is in our backyard. The Lawrence Livermore Berkeley Lab. There's an image of it here, and no doubt you've probably heard of this institution. They just shared some of their recent findings about two weeks ago after Helene came on shore. That was the one that caused such devastating flooding through North Carolina that was off the scales, unexpected, and completely unprecedented. I'm going to pull out the two images that matter here most. This is their analysis pointing out the fact that what we saw in the rainfall that Helene was able to produce was 50% bigger than it would have been before human-induced climate change. That's the image over here showing you the degree to which the rainfall was intensified. It's not just the warm sea surface temperatures giving these storms more fuel. A warmer atmosphere by its very nature holds more water vapor. And by warming the atmosphere as much as we've had, these storms are now capable of seven to 10% more water vapor to work with. The image on the right shows you that the flooding that we saw through North Carolina from Helene was made about 20 times more likely than it would have been before the atmosphere started warming to the degree we've been warming it. We're gonna track what's going on with Milton in great detail. You no doubt have seen that across many other outlets. We'll have more on it here throughout the evening. Paul's gonna be on at five o'clock and he's gonna go into great detail on what we should all be expecting to take place from Milton. But the one thing that we shouldn't be surprised by anymore from hurricanes is the extreme and unprecedented behavior that they are exhibiting in those warm waters and the warmer air play such a huge role in 